point came, he wanted to carry out another hypothesis. And he wanted to find out, is it possible for me to make myself? That was, that was when God began the project of man. Because God created angels, they are strange beings. Michael is a revelation of power. So when Michael comes to a place, even if he's not talking, the energy he brings to that place, the energy level will change. Because everything about Michael is power. If Michael enters this building now, before he introduces himself, all of us will be slain. He doesn't know how to speak for himself. The power goes ahead of him. If Michael lands in Abuja, many kings will die. Wicked kings. You know, you know, you know how Herod died? Herod died because a king entered the territory. <laughs> because everything about him is power. When Gabriel enters this place, you will just begin to know things. Because there is a realm where they don't talk. You know as you are known. He is a custodian of mysteries. So when he shows up, you will just know. If Gabriel walks past you, you will know. Because he's a custodian of mysteries. He's a being of mysteries. And you know, in the angelic realm, they carry their environment. When we leave church, you will leave your environment behind. Angels are not like that. When an angel is going, he carries his environment with him. <laughs> the spirit realm is a strange realm. <laughs> it's a strange realm. When the spirit is moving, he comes with his environment. That's what we call atmosphere. They carry the environment. So the environment of Gabriel is secrets and mysteries. So when he comes, you will know things. Most times when you function in the prophetic anointing, an, an, an angel in the order of Gabriel stood by you. And so you look at somebody, you just know what is in the person's heart. How did you know? You entered an atmosphere of a being. That's how they operate. They carry the environment. So God displayed enormous creativity when he fashioned the angels. When he wanted to create man, there was nothing external he could do anymore. The only thing he thought of was to make himself. I want to sit down and watch myself. And that is why the glory of man, unlike the angels, is not external. He had to hide the glory of man. Because if the angels see that glory, they will know. And they may begin to worship man. So he said, he has hid this treasure in earthen vessel. <laughs> so when he created man, because man was a representative of God, he didn't put the glory outside. Michael's glory is external. Gabriel's glory is external. But the glory of man is hid inside. And that's why Paul said, this is the mystery of the age. Christ in you, the hope of glory. So... <laughs> David was carried to heaven and he had angelic debate and some of the things David heard now brought David to a state of sobriety and David began to ask God what is man? It's not who is man because that question came from the angelic realm what is this being? we have seen everything you created but what is man? the reason is because when you want to define a man you can't define him after any order except God so the simplest way to define man is God in dust. The, different, the simplest way to define man is God concealed. So when God looks upon man and created man, God had to rest. Because I don't need to walk anymore. Because when man is walking, God is walking. The reason God rested on the seventh day is because God has completed the project of creating another God. And that's why he said, Ye are gods, because you are the children of the Most High. And when Jesus came, Jesus did not contradict David. He said, It is written, Ye are gods, because you are the children of the Most High. If he say you are gods, unto whom the word of the Lord came, and the scriptures cannot be broken. You are gods. Why did you think God rested on the seventh day? Because if God is walking on the seventh day, it means two gods will be walking. If that is, if that is preaching and another one is preaching, you'll be distracted now. 
So when one is preaching, the other one needs to rest. So the one in heaven was resting. So that the one on earth can walk. That one on earth is the one now functioning by the wisdom of God. By the purposes of God. By the will of God. So that one on earth cannot walk unless it's in alignment with the one in heaven. This is why when Moses wanted to create the tabernacle, he said, don't build because you are creative. He said, make sure you build according to the patterns on the mount. Because your standard cannot be different from my standard. You are like unto me. The moment you step out of my realm, you will lose order and the quality assurance in the spirit will contradict you. And when you are contradicted, it means your essence has been defied. Build according to the patterns that are revealed. So every time you are living your life and you tap into another wisdom, it was not an advantage. You actually declined in standard. You actually depreciated in quality because you were not supposed to look upon any other spirits to create because no other spirit is in the order of Elohim. Only man was created in the order of Elohim. So when man begins to converse with other spirits, what that man did was that he denatured. What that man did was that he goes down in class. When man wants to function, the only one man is permitted to look at is the one that dwells in the secret because that's the only one that is like him. That's the only one like him. When you consult a spirit, you, did, you, don't, you didn't know who you are. You went down, you declined. And that was why when the serpent came to the garden in Genesis chapter 3 and advised the man and the man obeyed, God came, God was shocked. What? You mean another spirit is giving you counsel? Are you not aware that you are superior to every other spirit? How can a spirit advise you? You are in the order of God. Let us make man in our own image after our likeness. Let them have dominion. How could you go to subscribe to the wisdom of another spirit? The day you did that, what you did was that you made yourself a slave. You are no longer a God because the realm where I, I created you from, as a God, you have three designations. The first designation is that you are a son. You are a son. That's why you are a God. Because he that is born of God is a God. Number two, you are a king. That's why you can rule over the earth. But the day you obeyed another spirit, you have activated another spiritual law. Because whoever you yield yourself, servants to obey. The servant of him you are, whom you have obeyed. So what you did was that you handed over your scepter as a king to another spirit. The realm where you live, another spirit will rule you. I brought you into that realm to rule that realm. How come you handed your scepter away? You didn't know that you were a god. And the third thing you did is that you lost the authority of priesthood. The reason you have access to me is because you are a priest. And as a priest, your goal is to have intimacy and intercourse with me. So the Bible said in Genesis 3 9, in the cool of the day, the voice of God came walking in the garden. The goal was intimacy. But the door to the presence had been shut. So a cherubim came and drove him out of the, way, out of the garden. So the man ceased being a son. He ceased being a king. And he ceased being a priest. And the moment he lost those three things, he was no longer a god. He became a man of man. A man after the flesh. A man created from dust that will return to dust.